Hello ladies and gentlemen, I hope I'm going live about now, my iPad hasn't confirmed that yet, but uh, I really wanted to stream today because we obviously have some spicy online conversations. I will give all of this like a minute of rest so people can join, so I can um, uh, really make sure what exactly I'm talking about and maybe moderate myself a little to not provoke some of you too much. Um, it's definitely going to be an interesting one. My last video on Beeper uh, Mini just hit uh, over 7,000 views, so thank you very much for that. The channel in of itself is sitting at a nice 69k, so really, really appreciate that as well. And beyond that, I think we are doing really, really well. Um, I apologize if my face is a little red and my voice is a little dry. I think I'm a little sick, I don't know yet, everybody has fucking, you know what, I don't know if it's even still forbidden to say it for the YouTube algorithm, but yeah, I really wanted to um, make sure you know that when if I hit a point where I'm low energy, it's probably not my fault. So, uh, let's start with the typical, cheers guys. No, it's so cold. <laughs> Please let me know if the audio and video quality is working all right for you, if there are any questions you have, if there is anything really like, you know, like super important you want to get out of your chest, maybe you want to call me an apple sheep in like a super chat, I would really appreciate that. Um, so uh, all is fair here. And before we start, if you're enjoying this content or any other content on this channel, please consider subscribing liking, sharing, um, obviously leave a comment, whether it's live or once a video has already been processed. And if you want to support this channel directly, you can find a Patreon link in the description of this channel. Um, yes, 69k, I'm getting some early messages. Nice, I know. Um, and if you want to support this channel directly, Patreon link in the description or a super chat, super sticker, or once a video has already been processed, a super thanks. Obviously, all of it is equally appreciated. But so it's just watching, commenting, and basically uh, being part of the MarkTech community. Cheers. So, why am I back? It's sort of like the Terminator thing here, I, I guess, because I'm not the only one who is back, but so is Beeper Mini. <laughs> Beeper Mini, for those of you who don't know, is an iMessage client that you can install on Android, and unlike the bullshit that nothing wanted to pull with customers with nothing chats, that was just a sunbird-powered middleman where you had like a server farm of Mac Minis, um, and you had to send your data there. It, it was basically a security nightmare. Beeper Mini is a reverse engineering effort that basically gives you somewhat native access to iMessage. Now, it's totally against Apple's terms of service. It is totally immoral that somebody would be making money of a service they didn't create, have no hands in maintaining, and are actually actively hijacking to uh, get themselves paid but we'll get to some of that nuance too. So it launched on December 5th, then it was closed down after two or three days, and now after another two or three days, it's basically back. Whether it's with a vengeance or with a dud remains to be seen. Now, let's first get through the details of how exactly Beeper Mini is back, what are the um, details that you need to consider for your understanding. If you're an Android user who might want to use Beeper Mini, if you might want to support these guys, and then after that, I would like to transition into talking about the moral, the business implications, and just the rationality side be behind this, whether you should even consider using it when the reality is that there are plenty of alternatives and one upcoming one that definitely will be better in so many ways. So let's start. So this is basically a patch for Beeper Mini. Uh, they uh, have bug fixes and other improvements. Obviously the most notable, if you want to call it a bug fix, is a fix for Apple's fix for Beeper Mini existing in the first place. So um, yeah, that, that's an interesting one. You originally had to download this from their website 
side, so side loading on Android, that's an advantage you have on Android, I'm always fine with admitting that versus iOS. Um, this, however, is the uh, Google Play Store version, um, it's basically back. As far as I understand, I've heard some people having problem with that app, but for the most part, I think that um, it should be live and should be fine. Um, there are a couple of things to consider here. Um, for one, it is still the same solution. Now, they do have um, Beeper Cloud, which uses, I believe, some kind of intermediary, uh, but Beeper Mini is the solution that I uh, already described. It is what had launched basically about a week ago, and it is back. So there are supposedly no changes here, where it's still local, end-to-end -end encrypted, um, and offers you all the traditional iMessage functionality. Uh, phone number registration is not working yet, Yet. So um, Beeper had um, uh, disconnected several phone numbers from their client, basically, and that's because if an iPhone user tried to text somebody with a uh, phone number that was originally registered to iMessage through Beeper, um, it wasn't clear if the iPhone would know if that phone had already lost iMessage or if the phone is still running iMessage. In that case, it might try to send an iMessage, but uh, that phone cannot actually receive it. So they removed it. That was a smart move. However, that functionality of uh, re um, basically registering your phone number with an I iMessage account does not work. So you now must in with your Apple ID that supposedly is still just as safe, just as secure, because obviously Beeper does not actually collect your data, it goes directly to Apple, so their reverse engineering efforts seem to be quite impressive in that way. However, I just want to make sure that you understand that it is a tiny bit different from what you were doing a couple of days ago. Um, they're f trying to fix this. I don't know if this has something to do with what Apple did or what they have patched and maybe that has introduced some other problems. Uh, this game of whack-a-mole will most likely continue given that Apple has come out to the press and said they will basically keep on smashing down Beeper Mini, but um, yeah, it is what it is for now. Um, Beeper is also now free to use, which Beeper was supposed to come with a one week free trial and afterwards it would uh, turn into a two dollar per month payment now for now because of all the insecurity of apple potentially shutting it down over and over and over again beeper is now free but they're still encouraging people to potentially keep supporting them by leaving their subscription on and if all of this turns out to work and Apple is at some point maybe not able to shut it down, or maybe the European Union forces Apple to enforce some kind of chat messenger interoperability. By that point, by the way, um, I know some people have speculated that this would help Beeper. Um, I actually don't think so, because uh, Beeper is a very small solution that is currently asking for money, or more precisely, not asking for money right now, but wants to ask for money in the future. Um, I do not believe that um, if Apple announces a free API, basically, that people can access, um, I don't think that that will benefit Beeper Mini. I think that would most likely benefit like WhatsApp, Telegram, Signal, and they would integrate iMessage into their existing applications, which already have a large user base. And nobody would give a crap about Beeper Mini if it wasn't for the novelty of having iMessage integration onto Android. Besides that, it looks like like Apple will most likely be excluded from the messenger interoperability laws in the European Union anyway. So um, yeah, if you are like a gigantic Beeper Mini fan, it does not look good for you in the long run. I'm sorry to say that. Um, our place of ranking dropped uh, precipitously on Friday, leaving us a nice review there would help tremendously. Well, obviously the app didn't work, so people were like downvoting it. Um, please don't upvote it. Please let people know that like this is this is such a weird solution. Why would you want to base anything on it? Like you, you would like how much work does it actually take to go to an I iMessage user and convincing them to download WhatsApp versus getting beeper yourself 
paying for it potentially than having all those problems when Apple smashes it again. And uh, then you have to explain to that iMessage user, yeah, yeah, I didn't receive that message from you or this and that. Um, also, by the way, I'm supposedly an iMessage user, but I cannot access FaceTime. Or and if you want to send me like something that is hyper specific to iMessage, like um, those little apps that you have there, uh, the little games, the Apple Pay stuff. Yeah, well, you know, that doesn't work, right? I'm a very special kind of iMessage user that basically has like high quality video and photo stuff um, like uh, basically like um, MMS but digital right um, but for some reason you don't have all the other Apple and iMessage stuff this is why I'm always get frustrated because iMessage in of itself is super popular in the United States it's by no means as popular in the rest of the world but it's fun because it usually goes a little bit above and beyond for example one thing that iMessage doesn't get right was stuff like um, swipe to uh, reply right that feature had been available on other messengers for years and Apple only introduced it uh, earlier uh, like a couple of months ago with iOS 17 but what works are like the little iMessage apps the integration into find my the integration into Apple pay even Apple music stuff like that stuff that won't be easily replicated by just everybody else for everybody else even if iMessage at some point becomes interoperable it would just be like a rich link while with iPhone iPad Mac it basically takes you directly into the app you want something like find my is basically like halfway glued to the messages app anyway and Apple has like continuously improved that user interface so it actually works um, but that's neither here nor there right so let's continue with what has happened in their eyes and then I will present basically my side of the story and that I mean my interpretation of the story I'm not on anyone's side by default I know there is the perception that I would be automatically for Apple which by the way for example if you actually look at the EU laws being passed right like for example the site loading um, legislation I'm against uh, forcing Apple to enact site loading. However, I am not specifically on Apple's side here, and the, my point is that, for example, I am I, as a console user, I like like a really dedicated experience where it's like highly curated by the platform holder. The same goes for iPhone and iPad. For all the site loading stuff, I have my Mac. Sure, that's a lot of money to spend, right? But it's my money, and nobody forced me to. I could buy a three, four hundred, or fourteen or fifteen hundred dollar Android device if I wanted to. In fact. I did usually own an Android device as a secondary device, but I eventually didn't care, right? Sure, I would like some emulators on my iPhone, but it's not a really a game-changing proposition, in my opinion. Um, but in that case, I'm really nuanced. I really try to explain I, why I understand that some people want site loading, why I specifically don't want it, but also that even I would eventually benefit from an, a law like that being passed. And what I actually don't like are like the long-term ramifications, for example, of uh, people, uh, uh, of developers eventually forcing you to go outside the App Store so that they can go around Apple's 13, uh, 30 or 15% commission so that people can um, basically uh, go around Apple security and privacy uh, uh, stuff for uh, it is, as is uh, dictated to App Store developers. So it's a highly nuanced perspective. Now, I do have a somewhat nuanced perspective on this. But it definitely comes out at the other side, definitely in favor on one party over the other. So, Beeper Mini launched on Tuesday, so basically a week ago. It was in the top 20 of Play Store charts. I don't know if that means that it was actually, like always paid for because they're saying it was the fastest growing paid Android application but you were paying for subscription you weren't paying from the uh, for the download regardless it seemed to have been successful in the first 48 hours it was downloaded more than a hundred thousand times um, 
uh, or more by a hundred than a hundred thousand people. Um, and, and this is now basically like their dogma here. Android and iPhone customers desperately want to be able to chat together because God forbid, if you can download this, you definitely cannot download WhatsApp um, to chat together with high quality I, uh, images. Why did I want to read it as images? Images and video, encryption, emojis, typing status, read receipts and all modern chat features. We all want a fun, easy and secure way to chat. For a glorious three days last week, Beeper Mini made this possible. On Friday, we started getting reports that Beeper Cloud and Mini users could not send or receive messages. We investigated the issue and starting to work on a fix. Within 24 hours, we fixed the issue for Beeper Cloud and published an update. Uh, Beeper Cloud users can now send and receive messages. It's working exactly as it did before Friday. Um, so yeah, I didn't cover that because from what I understand, Beeper Mini is the less interesting solution, the less relevant one. Um, note, Beeper Cloud's new October 2023 iMessage bridge never used Mac Relay servers and still does not today. It uses a similar method to Beeper Mini, but runs on a cloud server. So there is an intermediary step, but it's not as supposedly as bad as the intermediary step that was going to happen with nothing chats, right? So this is why I'm more charitable to those guys than, for example, I was to the nothing CEO who's like such a freaking joke, but regardless. Um, so Bieber Cloud, uh, supposedly not as bad, but, um, and I didn't hear, hear anything bad from like security researchers. I am not a developer myself. I'm not an engineer, so I will not be talking on like a deep level of, of what I think of these solutions technologically. I will talk about that on like a superficial level with my knowledge about reverse engineering in general and what that means sometimes. And I will talk about um, basically about what it means for the larger messaging uh, 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 systems for uh, the Apple's ecosystem, for some of the morality behind a business like this and stuff like that. Um, but for now, let's dissect their claims, put it into context with Apple's statement. They've actually done a pretty good job uh, here to prepare it for me. Thanks, uh, thanks for that. Um, so at the same time, we took steps to deregister all phone numbers associated with Beeper Mini, and we sent push notifications to all users updating them on the situation. If you want to know why exactly that's a problem, for one, I've covered it in the beginning of the video, but you can also watch my original video covering uh, all this Beeper Mini stuff. In hindsight, our timing was a mistake. We should have communicated to our users sooner. We're extremely sorry for the inconvenience caused by the outage. Um, I think the inconveniences, if Apple actually manages to like keep closing down Beeper Mini, will grow to the point where the trust in this product will be zero. And even if it's functional for like 95% of the time, people would not use and certainly not pay for it for that because of the risk of in 5% of the time, it just doesn't do what it's supposed to, right? Um, so um, I just really wanted to cover this because this kind of inconvenience of like having to wait for push notifications, whether or not you're messaging client, like, look, every messaging client will have problems from time to time, like servers might go offline, there might be some kind of instant security patch that you would have to install. But that is the truth for basically every always online piece of software. When it comes to basically a middleman solution, even though it's not technically a middleman in the sense that like nothing chats was, that becomes an entirely different play of walk a mole, as I said, because now Apple closes this, then they have to rush out to give a fix. You have to rush out to, to find some kind of interim solution until it works again. You have to decide for yourself whether you want to keep paying or not. So the actual complications here are quite huge in my opinion. 
Um, today, less than three days later, we are pub publishing an update. Oh, publishing. <laughs> I was going to become a Britain, British person for that moment. Um, we are publishing an update to fix Beeper Mini. Users can now sign in, send and receive messages. Beeper Mini is back. Despite reaching out, we still have, have not heard anything directly from Apple. Um, some people have complained about that. Um, I saw online whether people are basically like, oh, look, big bad Apple. It's like, guys... To Apple, this is terrorism. I know it's like a loaded statement, but this is their like Bush Jr. like response of like, yeah, we don't negotiate with terrorists. I'm sorry, but I, I think that if they hear anything from Apple, it's going to be a sis and desist. It's not going to be a, oh, could you please stop doing that? Or alternatively, it will be, we are about to send you a sis and desist. If you stop it right now, we will not. Uh, but we will send it otherwise and otherwise if the cease and desist is the first message you bet your ass the second one will be something like yeah you know what um, the next one will be like a destructive force absolutely decimating you because I think they will like try to appeal to like oh reverse engineering is not the same as like stealing and stuff like that but this service is like hijacking Apple ser servers um, uh, explicitly against their terms of service. It's absolutely insane. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought that my video had stopped working for a second. Um, Apple statement. Now, this is from uh, The Verge. Uh, apparently, Apple had contacted David Pierce there. So what did Apple say? Now, I did cover that to a degree by basically rephrasing a lot of this because it was always clear, but let's uh, go through Apple's statement directly. At Apple, we build our products and services with industry-leading privacy and security technologies designed to give users control of their data and keep personal info safe. We took... Uh, we took... What is up with my pronunciations today? We took steps to protect our users by blocking techniques that exploit fake credentials in order to gain access to iMessage. This, these techniques posed a significant risk to users' security and privacy, including the potential for metadata exposure and enabling unwanted messages, spam, and phishing attacks. That is important. Apple, obviously, if an, like a an, uh, phone number gets registered with iMessage, it's like explicitly only used for spam. I believe Apple can like deregister it. Um, in this case, I do not know with of, like some of the data, how it's handled, if that uh, can happen in the exact same way phishing attacks now they could happen regardless but yes obviously having some kind of additional influx of users injected into your pipeline that you do don't have full control over definitely is bad as for metadata exposure uh, that i'm not a data engineer um, i cannot speak to that we'll continue to make updates in the futures to protect our users which means as much as we'll keep playing whack-a-mole with beeper mini until it never rises up again we of course expected a response this is now the beeper mini guys what we didn't expect was 1984-esque doublespeak oh my god i'm starting to dislike them this is complete fud beeper mini made communication between android and iphone users more secure that is a fact that is a lie um, yes, if you want to just use the native client, right, which the regular messages app that supports SMS, yes, that one uh, definitely, um, because it does not have end-to-end -end encryption, was worse. Guess what? As I've said time and time again, there are alternatives to it, and Beeper Mini wants to pretend like they don't, and that is a lie, not a fact. Make no mistakes, the changes Apple made on Friday were designed to protect the lock-in effect of iMessage. It was designed to protect iMessage and everything that comes with it. The features that Apple have known and um, uh, grown to like, the security and privacy that people associate with it, and yes, to a degree, the lock-in effect. I think this effect is completely overstated. I think the US is a weird like societal state right now when it comes to bipartisanship across 
the board, which includes like Android versus uh, iOS. Um, I think this is a people problem. Most of the world has figured it out. Please figure it out yourself before you start blaming Apple. The end result is that iPhone customers have less security and privacy than before. No, if they write, if they check with iPhone users, they still have the same security and privacy. Before Beeper Mini, Messages app, the default chat app on iPhone, and by no means the only Messages app that you can have on iPhone, forced all iPhone customers to send unencrypted, unsecure, green bubble SMS messages to Android friends, family, and colleagues. Yes, and you were not limited to it. This is a fallback solution. Even worse, when iPhone customers added an Android phone number to an existing iMessage secure encrypted group chat, the Messages app would by default switch the entire group chat to using unencrypted, unsecure SMS. Yes, that is a problem. This is why people who want to have a multi-platform group chat should really find one of those alternatives that are specifically designed to be cross-platform. This immediately made communication between iPhone customers in the group chat less secure. Beeper Mini fixed this problem and many others, oh thank you so much, and made it possible for Android and iPhone customers to enjoy a secure, easy and high quality chat experience. We're working to make chat more secure and enable consumer choice. Oh, and now they're actually attacking me. So why don't people just use Signal or WhatsApp? Um, Telegram is the best by the way, but okay. The answer is that Messages app is the default chat app for all iPhone customers. Guys, my 75-year-old grandma is downloading stuff from the App Store, and she was even fine with the Galaxy S8 before that, where obviously the user interface is not quite as intuitive. So, no shit. Th this idea that, like, oh, it's the default. Default means nothing. Like, a lot of software these days even comes without m many defaults right because uh, it's it's so fucking stupid not only is it the default iOS makes it impossible to change the default chat app default chat apps are worthless like this is oh my god I, I'm gonna lose my mind here defaulting a chat app is completely pointless because not whatsapp not telegram not signal signal do support an sms fallback the reason why sms is a fallback is because in times where the internet might be super bad but you still have like that tw 30 year old like internet connectivity that's uh, somewhat out there like you can still send like a low detail sms it's similar to how satellite communications with apple are not designed to give you like high quality video through it um and it was introduced as a fallback well it wasn't introduced uh, iphone obviously started with sms then added mms like three years later than everybody else then came imessage and with iMessage, SMS, and MMS state as fallback solutions. And guess what? The next generation of fallback solution, one that unfortunately still fully requires the internet, so it won't so, like solve the like low connectivity issue, but it's going to be RCS, right? RCS is going to be the replacement for SMS and MMS. The fact that there is a default app means nothing, and changing the default messenger app means nothing because you still have to go into the app give it permission for yeah, like your contacts uh, and stuff like that every app that you have that can send you push notifications is as good as a default app basically the difference with something like browser defaults uh, default apps is link opening because a link is a link it doesn't matter like um in what it, well it matters to you in what interface you like open up with what browser engine you open it up this is why you can choose the default but if somebody sends you a signal message and your default is whatsapp you will still get that signal message and you will still get all the like system integration features that apple offers even to like imessage right where you pull a little down on the message 
message and then you can type a reply right from the notification, right? You can customize your messages and stuff like that. I, I guess you could like maybe do more like contact customization right out of the gate in the settings app, but I, like, yeah, I don't really care about that. I believe you could still like block contacts and stuff like that based on like whatever message messages app there in um, for you. Um, not only is it default, iOS makes it impossible to de change the default app. In the US, where the majority of people have iPhones, um, I don't know if it's actually over 51%. I think the ownership might actually be over half. Uh, the sell through a market share is not over half. It's just that iPhones usually stay let's say alive for a little longer so even if apple's market share um like sell through market share is below 50 percent the ownership rate might be over 50 percent and i know it's like a crazy 80 percent or something for teams this means that the easiest way to chat is by tapping on your friend's name in your contact list and hit hitting the message button what but you can also send like the that's not even true. You can send other messages like that. Like I can start any kind of call that I want. Uh, like, like, uh, oh my God, this is this is so freaking disingenuous. We deeply object to delegation that Beeper Mini poses significant risk to user security and privacy. This is completely untrue. Now, this is a two-sided sword because um, if they want to say. Um, the solution that we have developed and the way we are working on it, we we ourselves don't pose a secu secu uh, security risk um, because we are not um, hackers or anything in that uh, like classic way. However, reverse engineering solutions is basically how hacking always starts. Like fully understanding how a piece of software is like structured and stuff like that and how you can access it is hacking like i've seen like people say like oh what it's hacking no bro it's reverse engineering like this is like from what is it like an 80s or 90s movies like hackers where they're like just sitting there and uh, they're just typing away right apparently nobody opened like um the source code or anything or like uh, never looked at what exactly they're working on they're just so fast they're just hacking right away it's like hacking to them is like smashing a wall with a hammer to get through like that's that's not what it is this is by all accounts hacking we just sort of believe that those guys are not malicious for one we know exactly what the app does they open it up to github like inspection and uh uh, they have a somewhat trusted like reputation in the industry but by all accounts the same kind of reverse engineering could also become exactly that kind of gateway for stuff that Apple mentioned, which includes stuff like, what did they say? What did they say? Me uh, unwanted messages, spam, phishing attacks, and metadata exposure. This all is exactly how you would hack into something to do those kinds of things. Um, so, no, to say that the approach in of itself is entirely like uh, basically security and privacy friendly is untrue whether or not those guys are like committed to security and privacy that's a different conversation um, also by the way they put a lot of work into the reverse engineering it's basically now public right so this could like uh, apple does not like stuff like that to be public um so they will do I, I, in my opinion i think they will start changing a lot of the backend for imessage and that could potentially be bad for older devices i i fully believe that apple would still like patch those out and uh send like to ios maybe 10 devices that uh, like a way to still get imessage uh, notifications but it would be a problem it, this will take away from Apple's internal uh, development resources. Um, as we explained above, the opposite is actually true. Beeper Mini increases security and privacy. That's bullshit. Only if you want to ignore every like third-party solution. To prove this, we published a detailed blog post about how the app keeps data secure and private. I read that. It, uh, this is why I am charitable to them. Beeper Mini is end-to-end -end encrypted. Yeah, because it's an uh, basically hijacking iMessage. <coughs> 
and the underlying connection method is open source for anyone to review so this is why i'm even covering this that way if it wasn't open source i would be like fully attacking it uh, for basically being a, a hacking uh, like scam uh, job um, we're taking that dedication to security and privacy even further. If Apple doubts the security and privacy of our app, we are willing to share the entire Beeper Mini code base with a mutually agreed on third party security research firm. No, dudes, it's not your service. Share everything, you pieces of shit. What do you mean, a third party? Who the fuck are you to hijack Apple's service and then be like, yeah, with an intermediary? We this is fucking actual terrorism. It's like, now they need, like, oh my god like oh yeah like we need like a bill clinton to moderate between us and camp david or something like come on if apple insists we would consider adding a pager emoji to metadata and all messages sent via beeper mini okay this would make it easy for messages app to filter out any messages i think they should do that and that apple should um uh, like, just uh, reject any message that has that page emoji. <laughs> At the end of the day, we're committed to building the best chat app on Earth. We'll continue working on that. I think this goes into the direction that they promised that they would also eventually integrate other services into it, like WhatsApp and stuff like that. Uh, that being said, I have no idea what the future of this looks like in the long run. So let us get into the spicy stuff. What are my takes here? We took half an hour to dissect it. I think that was good research for all of us. I think nobody can claim that I'm like completely biased here and ignoring everything they're like um, making available. So um, by the way, guys, if you want to see something crazy, here's like Bella, my cat. Sorry if you saw some hairy lag here. Um, yeah, that's how she sleeps when she is next to me. If you can even see what I'm showing. Let me just look at OBS. Yeah, you can see it. Good. <laughs> so, we got through the Beeper Mini blog post. Let's see what... Um, uh, 9 to 5 Google actually says we are usually a, quite a, a big fan here of um, 9 to 5 Mac. So what are the uh, Android people saying about this? Beeper Mini restores its iMessage app for Android and makes it free. But will it last? Um, just days after its debut, it's been supposedly killed. Um, cracked 100,000 downloads. We've covered all this. Now Beeper is back. It should be noted that um, this person, just as I uh, did, also thought that Beeper Mini is dead. Now it should be noted that I don't actually thought that Beeper Mini would never get a patch. Um, unless Apple also happened to send like a cease and desist, which I think they haven't yet or something like that. Um, but um, I do believe that in the long run it will be dead. That like Apple's whack -a game, as I've described it, will Will eventually lead to it dying. Um, so phone number. So they're covering the details here. Uh, they are just opposing it to what Apple has said. Um, so it seems it's only a matter of time until this latest effort is blocked. Yeah, so they're basically like coming to my own conclusion here. Now, I don't know. Again, I'm not an expert. I haven't got uh, I haven't deep dived into like what exactly like their reverse engineering effort is, how much Apple can change without breaking iMessage for iPhone users. Um in the long run, I absolutely believe that Apple will make it really, really hard for those guys. Like, they could do, like, a almost annual redesign for iMessage backend, which would be, like, hell of expensive and stuff like that. Uh, and then it would take those guys always an another extra six months to patch it. And then Apple would be, uh, like, quickly announcing something new. That's not what I want to happen. That would just be a waste of res research and development resources. But sometimes you are forced to react this way. Um, so there I actually think this article is pretty like 
neutral. I think they're just like talking about what happened here. Speaking to 95 Google, Beeper Eric's uh, Migichovsky, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, even though I'm from Eastern Europe and this kind of sounds like, like a Polish name, I guess. Um, this is still using the reverse engineering method to connect to iMessage. It's not using Mac server farms. Um, so there is some basically like... Um, Basically, the continuation of everything that we've known about Beeper Mini, but all now with the um, an insecurity of Apple potentially like killing it over and over and over again. Um, I also wanted to briefly just see what like is happening on X or to be more precisely Twitter, because it's this is where I've had a lot of fun yesterday, like talking about um, like what it means in the long run and um, how people are trying to now like change their uh, claims about stuff like people. Originally, a lot of people said, oh, Apple promised RCS. But um, now we want iMessage, and uh, but we are willing to pay for it. And my argument was like, dude, you said RCS was enough like two months ago. What happened? And they're like, well, iMessage is better and RCS is not yet out. And I am willing to pay for it so Apple could make money on me. By the way, until an iMessage client launches on uh, Android, not only would hell freeze over, but um, uh, RCS will be... Uh, in the messages app on iOS by that point, making it completely irrelevant for the most part. Um, also for most of the world, all of this is irrelevant. Like this is why my viewership count is so low because I don't yet have enough US viewers. Like US viewers are 0.1% to 0.3% of my viewers. If I had more US viewers, more people would be watching. <laughs> So let's see um, what exactly we can find on X. So specifically about Beeper Mini. Um, this is the developer, Eric Migichowski. Right now, Apple makes it really easy to send unsecure, unencrypted messages from iPhones to Android. Those are the same thing, by the way. Um, unsecure and unencrypted. Um, keep that in mind for iPhone customers, Beeper Mini. <coughs> You guys see that my throat is not quite the goat today. Um, Beeper Mini is a huge boost uh, to security and privacy. iPhone customers have an incentive to encourage their Android fan, uh, uh, fans to use Beeper. Yeah, it's... Like, I, I sort of guess I understand where the uh, core argument is coming from. But, again, I've already debunked a lot of this so um yeah i i don't like it uh, what are people saying here or third party apps that works on both platforms and does the same thing and does it even better right because like you aren't getting like all the iMessage functionality at least if you download whatsapp or, or telegram you're getting all the also exclusive stuff from those uh clients not taking sides so just food for thought i don't know who the guys i get the strong argument i hate the blue check mark so much i, I like for one these people are up front even though they're uh, comments that have more likes uh, this is so weird. Um, uh, so let's continue. Not taking sides, so just food for thought. I get the strong arguments for why now, but the part that's missing is Apple's guarantee for security over long term. When Apple user messages another Apple, when an Apple user messages another Apple user, they know the other side, App and OS, has security updates guaranteed. Um, now in, and in the future, I think that's why they color uh, differently. Um, okay. Even if you guarantee for the app, you might not be able to access Android OS versions. Um, no, the end-to-end -end encryption is something that would be guaranteed as long as they keep their reverse engineering um, up to date, which is quite a fee if they manage to actually pull it off. Um, okay, so... I guess there isn't. There, I actually think that like the engagement with this topic is actually not quite as high as I originally thought it might be. I think that my original video gained quite a, a good number of views because obviously that was when it was really hot. And I think after like 
hit it once, I think a lot of the excitement has already died, died down. Um, the iMessage fiasco continued. Beeper uh, CEO just announced that they found a workaround. So this is basically uh, them continuing to say. So what are people saying here? Why are so many people upset, obsessed with this app? Because it's the price fruit of the walled garden. That's not true whatsoever. Like it's a part of the walled garden and it become an essential part to a lot of like people in North America it's by no means the price fruit I think the app store in of itself is the far bigger thing <coughs> um, blah 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 they don't want to buy an iPhone but what everything that iOS have we've got our own shit SMS apps <laughs> thank you very much I don't know if this is pro Android or pro iOS to call your own uh, SMS app uh, shit um, if this wall got destroyed there's nothing left to, uh, for iPhone users to brag about yeah it's shit like this guys why I don't take fan droids or Apple sheep seriously but Apple sheep right now are 100% in the right when they're saying Apple has no moral or legal obligation to support this but then you have bullshit like this where people are yeah you know there's nothing on iPhone but this that's what Android users are wondering too. Why iPhone users are obsessed with this old technology? We have the same uh, question. Cope, cope. This is massive copium. Tim Cook and iSheep, you know, uh, z like zero likes or anything because they want to belong. Um, they're not just tired of Apple's way. <sighs> tired of the 12 years. My God, people say like the dumbest shit. Oh, they're tired. It's like, it's been like this for 12 years. You lost, G dudes. Like, you lost. Like, I, I know it feels like sometimes bad to buy something different because it has something that you wanted, right? It feels wrong. Like, I know that f many PlayStation users don't like, for example, the entire Blade situation right now because they don't know if it's going to be exclusive. If it's not, Microsoft might be playing a game about it. Xbox users probably would want to play, like, the latest God of War DLC, yet they don't have any God of War at all right it's like yeah that's how companies operate like open company or like open service companies like google microsoft when people say bullshit like oh google should make youtube exclusive for one most of google services also work in the uh, as a web versions they're actually quite nice when i had like a huawei for a while that obviously didn't have um the play store anymore a lot of web apps work almost better than google's native solutions uh, in uh, the play store this is why i'm usually such a big advocate for using an iphone for google services because google's app store apps are usually better than their android counterparts they their Android counterparts are just usually happen to get a feature or two a little sooner because they are not quite as much of obviously subject to store regulations and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, and overall, I think that like uh, the way that like Gmail or YouTube perform on average on iOS devices is usually more fluid, more battery efficient than it does on Android. Um, they don't want to buy an iPhone. Okay, we were here. <clears throat> We demand security for iPhone users to message outside of their own platform. Apple refuses. I, that's like bullshit. It's, yes, that's true. RCS is literally coming next year. Like, come on, people. Like, have some nuance. Jesus Christ. It's, Beeper Mini is great, but I was told that having a blue bubble would make everything like me. Is my bu bubble blue? It's sent from your email 
But yet bubbles are blue. Boo! Trying to use beeper mini, it's neat. Or boo, like, I guess, like, oh, oh, I'm relieved. Does having a blue bubble make you guys like me more? Guys, okay, that's that's really funny. I, I really like this. Um, I message for Android the beeper mini is back. Okay, that that's actual news, you know, that's not like people sending shit. Apple shut down beeper minis uh, this weekend. Oh, that's tech check, okay. Um... I guess I could listen in for a second. Like I think I would be interested to think what like what like the, a more neutral platform I guess says. I don't know if you can consider it neutral, but um, just give it a quick chance. <sighs> People know it as green bubble stigma. If you text with Android users or you are an Android user, you know exactly what we're talking about here. Missing features, no read receipts, distorted media quality, group chat issues. Well, a startup called... <laughs> this sounds personal. This sounds as if she has not only experienced it, but either gotten hate for or hated when somebody like messed up a group chat. Um, Dream SMP, why would Apple do that? I don't know, man. Um, let me know. <laughs> found a workaround last week, suddenly and seamlessly by downloading a paid app. Android users could send blue bubble messages in <gasps> chats. They automatically switched over to iMessage. This is a breakthrough if you've been one of these people either side of it it caught on like wildfire fire a hundred thousand downloads in a hundred thousand downloads is not later, though, that, that down, big but okay saying that it was trying to protect I'll the bite. privacy and security of their iMessages. messages i did speak to beeper ceo eric migakovsky who had this migakovsky okay i'll remember that. you think that that statement is complete uh fear yeah, and he's a good looking profile. dude i guess uh, it's untrue. why why do i always comment on how guys uh, guys i am straight but i am uh, somewhat like i guess um, like so what interested in how guys look when i I react to their videos it's a uh, chat experience forget it so apple has in fact considered integrating android messaging in the past but emails that were made public through another regulatory battle apple versus epic it revealed that apple believes iMessage is a way of locking users into the apple ecosystem um, it's a way of adding value specifically to the iphone hardware yeah in other words, protect its walled garden. This is a strategy, though, that is increased. Uh, I hate it when people like an actual news use bullshit like this. Like, I, I don't hear those arguments about like consoles and stuff like that. Like, I didn't hear it. Like, uh, so, I, I hate the walled garden bullshit so, so much at odds with app developers and regulators dream um weren't you like an android user um, as far as I remember? Weren't you like the guy who had like the latest Samsung devices? There's a small band of us that are fighting the good fight and trying to make uh, a more e open, equitable and um, offer consumers. Yeah, the word equitable is, oh my God, uh, equitable in a way where you have to pay guys that have nothing to do with the creation of iMessage. Because as of right now, there's too many lock-in effects that are causing people to not be able to choose the technology yeah. that they want to use. So Dream, tell me, would you consider using something like this to like properly communicate with with like somebody like me, I guess? And that band is actually getting bigger. Meanwhile, Senator you want Obama blue bubbles. She has been tracking this particular blue bubbles for Dream weekend on X. Big tech executives are oh, God. This is so cringe. Washing competitors dom uh, certainly this is not the last that we're going to hear about this because beeper oh yeah by the way like beeper um there was something that um elizabeth warren um elizabeth warren for those of you who don't know um uh, and i'm explaining this as a german person um so elizabeth warren is um is a left-leaning U.S. senator. She was a candidate when also like Bernie was um, uh, running and of course then Biden won. <laughs> and Bernie is like an actual leftist with like somewhat even like socialist beliefs. Elizabeth Warren mainly is like against like big business. In that way, I'm actually closer to her politically maybe than Bernie. However, Elizabeth Warren has a really really bad track record with talking about technology and big business by clearly not understanding how those companies actually work like i'm all for regulating them but as you guys maybe see from the european union regulators and lawmaker lawmakers 
often don't have an ounce of an idea what exactly they're regulating. Uh, often they're regulating shit based on competition, giving them like basically a pre-written uh, uh, law. And Elizabeth Warren said that like this was anti-competitive from Apple and stuff like that. Um, and basically implied that Apple should be forced to give them not like a free API even or something, but like a, still allow like reverse engineered basically a hacked in injection of somebody else into their highly like data sensitive service. <laughs> you want blue bubbles without paying a thousand pounds for a phone? Well, they are cheaper iPhones than they are for than one thousand pounds. But uh, judging from your tech portfolio, I guess you only want the highest end one. And I guess why would you even get a phone that isn't built out of titanium or anything? Um, so Elizabeth Warren, blah blah blah. Wait, Elizabeth Warren Beeper, I guess. A search on this is like... Um, Senator, Senator Elizabeth Warren has publicly sided with Beeper. I guess I'll open it in Apple Insider. Um, with Apple's Beeper fight with irrelevant antitrust rhetoric. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, I like this guy. Uh, Mac uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren has publicly sided with Beeper in the public fight over iMessage access, using the issue to try and continue to push an anti-big tech agenda that has little relevancy in this particular matter. I, I, I'm glad that they're really talking about the relevancy because there's a lot that you can regulate that is anti-big tech that I would be all for. But when people start talking about bullshit like this, it, it hurts me, but then I have to end up protecting a $3 trillion corporation versus a democratically elected senator. And that sucks. Please, Elizabeth, don't force me to do that. Be one with nature like your original one, 100th uh, per, uh, part of you that is Native America. Be a green bubble. Be all balanced and stuff like that. Um... Apple's decision to close down access to Beeper Mini and prevent the Android app from working um, on the iMessage network has reached the ears of US lawmakers. In possibly the first noteworthy comment by a senator in the matter, it has been used as an opportunity to attack Apple, albeit with a bit of flawed logic. Posted to X on Sunday, Senator Elizabeth Warren, a Democrat from Massachusetts, starts her response by confirming a fact. Green bubble texts are less secure. Well, unless we're talking about like WhatsApp and stuff because those messages are also green I, at least by default um, dream you know what you want to pay two dollars for uh, uh, for beeper I guess or shit like that how about you throw a coin to like your favorite like streamer I guess because I definitely know that I am your favorite streamer so just throw me a little bit of a super chat you know we're all friends here um, uh, in a, uh, posted on X, green bubbles are less secure, Warren offers, which is true since green texts are unencrypted text messages, unlike the end-to-end -end encrypted blue ones. That's absolutely true. Um, green bubbles are less secure, so why would Apple block a new app allowing Android users to chat with iPhone users on... Oh, she, she posted it on Twitter. Why was it then so difficult to look for... Oh, she didn't put beeper into the message. So if I just open it here, I guess I can then see the responses. Oh my god, linking linking on X is completely broken with like the Twitter for Mac app. Like why can couldn't I just by default open it in Yeah, I, I want to open it in the browser. I'm already logged in. Wait, was that part of like a diverge article? Why is it opening up this? Oh my god, this is so weird. So, um, Apple Insider. Okay, and then we go to Elizabeth Warren. And then we don't open the app. Okay, I guess this isn't the Diverge article, so... Um, what's your opinion on the Motorola Razr 40 Ultra? What? Is, is, is that a new, brand new one? Um, I, I know the 30s, Motorola Razr 40 Ultra.
Um, it's a flip phone? I hate flip phones. I don't care. Oh, wait. Did I cover this? I, I, I hate flip phones, dude. Why are you asking me? You know that I'm like a, a fold guy, not a flip guy. Yeah, yeah, I know that one. Is it, is it called the 40 Ultra in like other regions than the United States? Because I, I think when I originally covered it, I covered it under some different name. Regardless, let's go back to uh, uh, the uh, Elizabeth Warren stuff. Um, so I guess that's the only thing she contributed. So why would Apple block a new app allowing Android users to chat with iPhone users on iMessage? The senator asked before offering her own take. Big tech executives are protecting profits. Oh my god, I'll just look for freaking Elizabeth Warren and then just like... Um, Drug company, financial industry, green bubble. Oh, okay, she, there it is. Um, oh, I guess I have the verge muted, so maybe that's why it didn't show up like uh, well. Um, green bubble techs are less secure, so why would Apple blog it? Uh, big tech executives are protecting profits by squashing competitors. Yes, a competitor like Beeper Mini. So weird. Uh, chatting between different platforms should be easy and secure. It is. If you're a person who understands anything about technology, Senator can't thank you enough for focusing on the pressing issues of our time, green bubbles and sandwich industry consolidation, rather than fringe issues such as inflation, border security, rampant anti-Semitism and Chinese aggression. Well, um, I guess it's a, kind of somewhat a... Cons oh, it's Robert Sterling, yeah. Um, I, I guess and he got me into like Chinese aggression. Did you know that every single thing... Like, I'm not a big fan of also flaunting border security. I think Biden is doing quite well on that issue it doesn't really matter here did you know that every single thing you do on the internet is tracked at all times list the american public should also get to see the meeting notes between yeah, okay. are they in leaks with big sandwich how deep the what did elizabeth warren say about sandwiches did does that have anything to do with like uh, the anti subway boycotts? Oh Jesus, it's also bullshit. Senator, respectfully, you're referencing an app that improperly accessed the Apple messaging system by impersonating Apple devices and let, made it less secure. Based, based, based. Aaron Cohen. Um, I think I know who Aaron Cohen was. Famous Zionist. Oh my God! Why are people so hyper political here? I guess it's like the pride inclusiveness flag here, which I like um, for the most part. I think people tend to like read. It's it's like famous Zionist here, like a joke. Why is everything so hyper political? I don't want to like people who are like I am political, but at least I'm pretty open about it. Uh. Madam, we are focused on regulating Big Sandwich. What is Big Sandwich? <laughs> okay, I guess it's not as quite colloquial. Um, sandwich. Um, Elizabeth Warren. Breaking Senator proposes snow your customer law for sandwich shops. Washington DC in a bold and somewhat bizarre move. Senator Elizabeth Warren has introduced a new bill that aims to ramp up national security by implementing know your customer and anti-money laundering checks at sandwich shops. Okay. The Subs and Security Act, as it's okay, it's an officially called this way, was met with a mix of confusion and stifled laughter when it was presented on the Senate floor yesterday. According to Senator Warren, this groundbreaking legislation will effectively prevent terrorists and rogue nations. Is this also like a right wing account? Because Democrats usually don't get too many blue bubbles, but it's this is uh, sandwiches are a staple in the American diet. If terrorists. No, this cannot be a real... Uh, if terrorists got their hands on our hoagies, who knows what could happen? No, I refuse that this is a real statement. This, can this cannot be real. Rich... No, he he's the only one who said this. Sandwiches... Are Wait... There is like zero confirmation of this bullshit. Is, it, is this like a right-wing conspiracy theory again? 
Oh my god, it's so hard to find actual info on um, on X these days. It's such bullshit. Um, yeah, so I agree with the Apple Insider article entirely here on whatever she uh, said uh, here being basically wrong. But like the responses to her is also, ah, oh, Jesus. Yeah, it looks it looks somewhat conspiratorial um, against her. I, just because I don't like what she says here doesn't mean that I will automatically believe any bullshit I read about her. Uh, I think the EU already solved it. Apple is bringing RCS messages. By the way, RCS messages have nothing to do with the EU's interoperability law. If anything, the EU uh, the EU's inter uh, messenger interoperability law, whatever this piece of regulation will end up being called, um, is more even for stuff like Beeper Mini. For example, WhatsApp is like present is like preparing to add like for example like Telegram or Signal into itself, right? I guess they would all have to make like open API so people can access their stuff and stuff like that however RCS is still it's like a new solution it doesn't guarantee compatibility with every other service um, so no RCS even though yes Apple obviously is partially uh, adopting RCS because it will help them with regulators Apple in of itself is actually getting excluded from the EU law because they are not big enough um, iMessage is not uh, does not have sufficient market share here in Europe to be actually be targeted Targeted by this legislation. I think the EU already solved that. Apple is bringing RCS next year, plus Beeper Mini, according to Apple, is a significant risk to user security and privacy, including the potential for metadata exposure, enabling unwanted messages, spam, and phishing attacks. Uh, imagine doing research be, uh, be, uh, be about the situation before making a statement. Well, that's what we did. Apple wants to use RCS yet, but not end to end encrypted, so still unsecure. Um, False. They do not want to use the proprietary, I think that's how it's written, uh, Google end to end encryption. They are working with the standards body to create a E2E solution that would be part of the RCS protocol. I've already covered this um, on Twitter enough, so I actually know that this is completely wrong <laughs> when people say that. Um, yeah, so I guess the third party illegally did it the third party forced apple i hate how like the blue how many blues are up top it's like only here we now start to hitting without blues and then we still have like blues in between jesus blue check marks are really killing this platform uh, so is the massive exodus of advertisers, so is the massive influx of right-wing idiots but also that's a different discussion um okay so people really really are aggressive here um so let's see what else is happening in the beeper mini world now uh, i think i'm trying to use this basically i promised that i would speak like for example about the morality right my problem is with something that like eric does here right he's trying to basically point him uh, appoint himself as like the good guy here right oh i'm offering the more secure solution now that is complete bullshit because as i said third party solutions exist they are extremely popular worldwide um they are proven even uh, something as shitty as facebook still is running whatsapp pretty well and the problem with all of this is now Beeper Mini is at least free. But they have said that they are looking to reinstate it. And they will be collecting stuff like Patreon stuff and subscriptions from those who want to keep supporting them. Obviously, that is not quite the same as deliberately asking for money. So that aspect has improved. But not only do they not have a right to ask money for, to access iMessage, but they do not have a right to access iMessage at all. This is my 
my problem. Um, last week, Beeper launched. Uh, let's end on uh, uh, protecting. What, what are people saying here for morning brew? Tim Cook and Bill Gates run the entire planet and they don't have your best interests in mind. Those are the awesome big mind people that are uh, anti-big tech, by the way. Like, there's plenty to criticize the big tech. Not like this. The whole business model for Beeper Mini presupposed... Oh, that's that's like the daring fireball. Yeah, that's, that's always a good one. Um, that Apple should just foot the bill for the usage of Beeper's paying customers... As though iMessage is a public resource or part of your cellular service, like SMS, MMS, or eventually RCS. Glad somewhat finally said it. Parker is a good guy. Um, um, like I said the other day, I have no personal issues with Beeper, uh, but any le a logical person could see why it could not stand. Yeah, that's all correct, uh, basically. So uh, you guys see from what I'm liking here, from what I'm commenting, you can kind of get a glimpse into both my general worldview <laughs> and also my worldviews in specifically about this I issue. I want to work hard and never give up like Beeper Mini. Um, Beeper Mini is back. Oh yeah, well. You guys see what I'm saying that like the engagement with this issue is not as big like Engadget is a big thing and it has like two responses to something as important as Beeper Mini and I can only see one so I guess I'm like blocked by one Beeper Mini attempts to come back. Are you installing? After set, uh, setting up the new Beeper Mini, a message appeared on our iPhone that said device added to your account. A Mac now has access to iMessage which offers a hint uh, as to Beeper's fix. Okay, I guess. Um, interesting, Beeper Mini is now a free app. Yeah, that helped. That, that helps a little bit with morality, at least in the interim. Uh, Beeper Mini is back and working with the developers. You see, like, it's like two hours ago, Apple Insider, and like, like how many, like 700,000 followers almost, and like zero engagement here. It's like it's crazy. And then we are getting to... Uh, this guy is funny. Uh, I... I think I've seen him like... Oh, he has a YouTube channel. Uh, maybe I should react to something from him. Um, OnePlus Open. Yeah, he's a OnePlus guy. Um, post, blah, 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 blah. Uh, let me see what his replies are. My entire timeline got them, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so he hasn't tweeted as much about RCS anymore. Um, I, I think I'm mixing him up with somebody else that I chatted with. Beeper Mini is here today. That's again Eric Majeskowski. They may it happen sometime in 2024 and they haven't said whether it will support encryption. What? Oh, oh, it's about like, uh, oh, it's about, yeah, John Prosser has been really feisty on this one. Um, so this is, uh, okay, this is interesting because I think this will uh, respond to a lot of stuff that I, like, that you wanted me to uh, comment on and stuff. Um, uh, John Prosser uh, said, the argument, if you want Google services by a pixel, isn't the gotcha that you think. iMessage was always part of Apple's vertical business model. Google's business model is horizontal by design. Their services are a vehicle for ads and, uh, and data collection, and Google needs them to be cross-platform. Their services are the product. In fact, they often make more money on iOS than they do on Android, so they would are probably more likely to give up uh, iOS than they are or Android. Android. Um yeah, they're more likely to give up Android sometimes than iOS. <laughs> iPhone is the product. iMessage is the feature, not the right. Um, oh yeah, uh, I just like wanted to also like cover. The yeah, this is the guy that I've uh, gotten into a conversation yesterday with like iCave Dave. We're, we're thinking of doing a collab. Maybe um, I, I think I'm pretty busy this week overall, but maybe like next week or something like that. I guess I'll have to throw him a message or something. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is, by the way, also like uh, an issue that I wanted to cover. It's not about how sad Android users are, which a lot of people basically are making this a moralistic argument about how sad Android uh, users are. So, yeah, this is a deflection. It's actually an argument used by many people. But it's all about how their iPhone friends bully show bias towards them. And that's why we want no colored bubbles. Instead, we want unity. Such 
pseudo-moralistic bullshit, eh? Uh, maybe you just have bad friends. Absolutely correct. Guess his bad friends use only iPhone. Um, yeah, I guess they are bad apples, one might say. Or you can go to PC where everyone can use everything. What? That's not even remotely true. Like, even all the big messengers don't always have, like, like always, like, one-to-one -one feature parity with, like, their mobile apps. And with WhatsApp, you have to use, like, a weird thing that collects the actual messengers from, like, your phone and uh, doesn't connect directly. I think they've solved it recently, but it's been like this for years. If you're a real gaming gamer and for the gaming community, you play on both systems. This is such a stupid argument all the time. There are more than two systems. Like, this is so stupid. Like, oh my god, you have... Uh, uh, you have a uh, PlayStation, you have Nintendo Switch, you have Xbox slash PC, you have mobile, which currently is getting a lot of exclusive apps, you have VR platforms that you need extra hardware for, or more powerful, even hardware for your own rig and stuff like that. Oh my god. I'm saying don't play in your console wars, be for the community. No! Exclusive games are not anti-community, they're not anti-consumer. They're how consoles survive. If you want console to survive, you want exclusives. Relentlessly hacking Apple while everyone cheers them on. Cringe. Oh, that has a lot of re uh, replies. Reverse engineering became hacking when? How do you think hack? Yeah, that's true. Hacking works often through reverse engineering. Usually attacking to get something out of it. This is a guy who only watch hackers or something. No way he's like... He's a software... But he's also an idealist, whatever that means. Um, just like the first iPhone USB-C guy, would you consider him hacking the phone? Yes, of course I would. I mean, it's modifying, not hacking in like the software sense, but yes. Uh, they're even charging $2 a month to use this service, so they're selling access to iMessage, a service they don't own. Right, absolutely correct. Um, hackers often use reverse engineering. Have to, hackers often use cars. Oh my god, the fact that people are liking this... More than this shows how fucking dishonest people are on this issue. That That is so uncomparable. Like, reverse engineering is the actual way to, like, enable hacking often. In what world is that, like, similar to, like, using, like, a car for your regular life while you're also a hacker? But they aren't hacking Apple. This tweet is cringe. No, this person is cringe. Um, I have posted my live stream. <laughs> this tweet is pretty cringe. Why are people just... Oh, it's because he said cringe. Like Apple did until Microsoft gave in. When Apple does it's for... What made iWork a success and helped relaunch Apple was the fact that Page... No! No, nobody... Oh my, this has... Oh my, this is so misleading. Oh god, this has absolutely nothing to do. Like, it was always possible for people to open work fi word files. Oh my god. Let me tell you a thing. Such great insight. There's insecurity without this... This this is such bull... Did people forget that they are like open solutions that do the same thing? Oh, God. Like, it's also like, it's an offline file that was already created. If Apple reverse engineered, like, a hack into accessing, like, words like, uh, like, um, cloud collaboration features or reverse engineer, like, their access to chat GPT without paying for it, licensing it, and stuff like that, I wouldn't support this. People are just lying. Oh, just use WhatsApp like the rest of the world. Yes. So the cat and mouse game begins. Or is it more like whack-a-mole now? It's more like whack-a-mole. Um, why is Apple filing charges? Is people doing anything illegal? Yes, I believe it's against terms of service. <sighs> Uh, 
Oh my god, people are sharing such bullshit. I hope you guys know now what exactly I think, because I think I've gotten, like, exasperated and exhausted enough. So let me just go back to what that guy was saying. Ba okay, so he used, like, John Prosser's tweet, right? And he was like, I don't want iMessage... Which, I mean, yes, you do. I want to be able to securely communicate with iPhone friends through their default chat app. Really cool thing you might not have heard of. That's about RCS coming to iOS. Beeper Mini is here today. That may happen sometime in 2024. And they haven't said whether it will support encryption. Um, own him, king. Oh, my God. This is why you are exploiting some loopholes and turning that into a business model. Yeah, great excuse. I think you should work with GSM Association along with Apple to make the RCS Universal Profile Encrypt. Yes, Apple is working right now, at doing actual new work on creating something new. RCS is coming. If you want it faster, send Apple your feedback. You can't just hack your way through it and make Apple c cover server and maintenance costs. It also can't expect Apple to keep an exploit open. That is 100% correct. Um, man, I hate being so far up the ass of big bi business and tech, but it's correct in this case. So, yeah, I think I'll wrap this up. Um, so, guys, Beeper Mini is back, right? Oh my god, they always ask you for the email and cover up half the screen. Um, I am increasingly not a fan of those guys. Um, I think they're acting similar to nothing, Chad. They're selling a feature that they have not really developed themselves. A feature that, sure, took them some effort, but by no means is like... A monumental feat takes some guts to do what they did, <laughs> but it does not mean that they have a right to do so. Um, and they're selling it as the best thing since sliced bread. Now, um, I don't think they're evil, but I think they are misguided and I think they are capitalizing on people's like... FOMO here basically they want to use iMessage or they want to use RCS and RCS is not yet out I think both things are overrated I think most of the world has shown how it should actually work and that is real competition between messenger apps which yeah sure in the end usually one or two win out like WhatsApp has like I believe in like in the Middle East like 98% market share or something like that um uh, but at least there is an attempt here. People just try to appeal to like somewhat woke, which I don't even mind woke. But in this case, like sort of like snowflakey moralistic arguments about people suffering from having to download a third party app. It's all bullshit. I think Apple is in the right here. That doesn't mean those guys are actually bad, like the Nothing Chats uh, solution was. But I don't think it's actually worth considering it as like something serious. Um, as you guys see, even people very high up the food chain will say something very unserious sometimes. And then... Uh, uh, people will cover it as much as they can and I'll cover it as much as I can and I hope you guys liked my coverage and I hope that uh, you will join me for the next one. Um, I'll give you my little princess right now as a parting gift. Yeah, you can see her licking herself. Enjoy that. <laughs> um, so I really enjoyed making this video. I do feel a little tired. Uh, maybe I am a little sick. Who knows? Um, um, but I will let you know when I do either a next stream or a next short video. Um, thank you guys for the amazing support you have given to this channel. Obviously, 69,000 uh, subscribers, almost 70,000. Nice. Um, and I hope we'll keep growing. I hope we'll keep attracting more people that want to watch us live want to watch videos once they've been uploaded which is what how most people watch it i'll have to admit um but regardless thank you so so much for everything you have done for this channel and i'll see you guys next time this is mark tech tuning out